Like the Bee Gees, we're going to keep these plants staying alive. So today, let's build a propagation station. I started this project by laying out my blanks on two pieces of walnut. I'm using some leftover cutoffs from the round coffee table build. Once I had everything laid out, I used a bandsaw to rough cut the blanks. I prefer using a bandsaw over a circular saw here because I find a bandsaw to be more efficient. Since I'm making three versions of the piece, I plan out and rough cut all of the pieces for all three versions. With the pieces roughed out, I took them over to the table saw to joint one edge. I did this on my crosscut sled. I hung the board just on the outside of the sled, clamped them down, and cut in the clean edge. With the rip cuts done, I swapped the table saw blade to the crosscut blade. I'll switch back and forth throughout the project depending on the type of cut I'm making. Referencing the jointed edge I just cut to the back of the sled, I cut away enough material to make a perfect 90 degree angle. This gives me a perfectly square edge to work off of for the rest of the project. Detailed plans for this project will be linked in the description below. Next, I referenced a newly cut edge to the table saw fence and ripped the pieces. The pieces now have three square sides. I like to use a featherboard when I can on the table saw as it reduces the chances of having kickback. Back at the crosscut sled, I set up a stop block to cut the boards down to their final dimensions. Using a stop like this ensures all my pieces are exactly the same size. Another great benefit to cutting out the blocks this way is that the offcuts are all square, and since I'm using those for the open style piece, it means less work later on. With all the larger chunks done, I moved on to the smaller blocks and I cut those down again using the crosscut sled. To make the final pieces the same overall dimensions, I cut down the length on the top of the smaller blocks. This makes room for the sides of the frame later on. Using a double square, I laid out the holes for the small blocks. The thickness of the size will offset the hole placement here. Then over at the drill press, I used a 1 inch Forstner bit to drill the hole all the way through the blocks. I built a small fence that ensures all of the holes stay centered on the blocks throughout this process. I used an F style clamp to hold the workpiece down to the table while I drilled. This keeps the piece from moving and reduces tear out from the bit. Make sure that you have a sacrificial board to drill into here. Remove the bit from the hole completely to clear out the chips. And if you can, set up a hose for your dust collector to help reduce the mess. If you're enjoying this video, please give it a like. It helps me reach more viewers like you.
Once all the small blocks were drilled, I moved on to laying out the holes in the larger ones. The holes for the large blocks are drilled in the same manner, the one caveat being that my drill press bottoms out at 2 inches, so the holes will have to be finished with a hand drill. To finish drilling the holes, I clamped each piece into my vise. Then using the same Forstner bit, I taped off a stop line and drilled to it. This did take a while as the batteries for my drill had to be charged midway. I should also note that I had to use an extender here on the Forstner bit to get it to reach the final hole depth. If you enjoy this type of content, please consider subscribing. I really appreciate your support. Once all the holes were drilled, I tilted my table saw blade to cut the bevels for the top. The biggest thing to note here is to make sure that the front face is down when cutting the bevel. For the angled version, I cut the same bevel into the sides of the workpiece. The open version goes through in the same way. Just make sure again to mark your top and your face so you don't cut the wrong side. Now you can really start to see the grain pattern on each workpiece. If you think these look nice, you should check out the whole coffee table project linked in the card above. Next, I used some of the offcuts to make the sides and bottom of the open style stations. I cut these down to the table saw, then used a miter gauge to cut the angles for the sides. Then with the bandsaw, I cut the strips down to just above the final thickness. If you would like to purchase any of the tools or items you've seen in this video, I will have links in the description. To get the pieces to their final thickness, I ran them through the drum sander. The next step is to cut the pieces down to their final length. I did this again over at the crosscut sled. The crosscut sled is one of my favorite shop accessories. Let me know what your favorite tool or jig is in your shop in the comments. To cut the rabbit joints, I set up a stop lock and removed the material with a few passes over the blade. Then it was time for glue. I used blue painter's tape to add some tension to the rabbit joints and clamp the side pieces to the top. While the glue dried, I used a belt sander to create the fake live edge profile in the organic style pieces. This is really a personal preference and is up to you on how you want the finished pieces to look. My suggestion would be to try to follow the grain pattern on your workpiece for the best results.
Finally, I sanded all the pieces from 80 grit up to 220. Just be careful not to sand away too much of your live edge. At the router table, I used a keyhole bit and some stops to plunge the mounting hole. This method creates a mount that is hidden on the final piece. The last thing to do was to add my mark. I finished these pieces with penetrating oil. That really lets the green pattern shine and protects the wood from fading in the sun. To mount the pieces, I used a template with two screws glued into two keyholes. Then I screwed some anchors into the wall. These stations turned out beautifully. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this build video. I make new videos all the time, so please consider subscribing.